Hi, I'm Brad Schwal, and I am the President and CEO of the Center for Integrative Counseling and Psychology, and we are very honored uh, to be a part of this Mind, Body, Soul Retreat. Uh, we have a collaboration with Park City's Baptist Church uh, that we believe is so important because we do believe that Christ cares for our whole selves, for our, our mind, our body, and our soul. And there are times in life uh, when we have expectations for how things should turn out, uh, but that doesn't always happen. Uh, we face changes, we face challenges, and we believe that Christ helps us navigate those times. We also believe that there are those times when a professional, uh, somebody outside of our family can be of help to help us navigate life, uh, to navigate uh, those changes and challenges, but also to find abundant life because Christ does promise us abundant life. So the question is, how do we bring faith to our lives? How do we address those times when we are, are thrown off of what we expected, thrown off of course, uh, there is a challenge, a concern about a family member. So our topic today is going to be um, how we help a grown child who may be struggling uh, with addiction, uh, with a challenge uh, that might be related to finances. It might even be depression or anxiety. And we have Evan Buya, who is a licensed professional counseling at the center. He's one of our therapists who offices here at the church throughout the week. He has a master's in counseling from Dallas Theological Seminary and a doctorate in spiritual formation from Dallas Theological Seminary. So his work focuses on therapy with individuals, with couples, with families. And I know that the issue of having an adult child who may be struggling is something that comes up often in your practice. And how, how would you state that key challenge for the parent um, whose child is now an adult, maybe an adult in his or her 20s, 30s, even 40s. What is the biggest challenge in, in addressing that and knowing how to navigate that? Yes. Well, yes, that can be very challenging, right? Because we love whoever we're in relationship with, our children. Um, and so we care for them. But many times, if something like an addiction is going on, Right, somebody is in essence under functioning in their own life. And so it really sets up a temptation to over function for them, right? And without knowing it, a unhealthy dynamic, an unhealthy pattern can develop to where, right, you begin over functioning or enabling for that person. And so the question is, is that really loving them? So the question is, you know, what is loving to really anyone we're in relationship with, but obviously in particular, those that we're close with that are in our family, we want to love them and love them well, but it gets challenging, right? If they're struggling, right? Or seem to not have the ability to function on their own, it just ask that question, how do we love them? And then really, where is that line? Okay. Right, there's a line that many times we don't know is there, right? And we can trudge past it and then ultimately not help them or ourselves in okay. that situation. So the dynamic is um, our adult child struggling. Um, in essence, you refer to that as underfunctioning, and our temptation is want to do to want to do more and more and more. Uh, let's talk a little bit about addiction. Uh, the dynamics of addiction. And, you know, I, I want to talk about depression, anxiety. Um, it might even be an issue with financial responsibility. So not that we're necessarily covering all of that, um, but I know that parenting doesn't end. Um, our, our kids are still uh, cared for by us, as you said. But give us, give us some background information to addiction. Um, how does it progress? Uh, what are we dealing with? Oh, gosh, lots of things. Um, as you just mentioned, right, yes, as parents, right, when you have children, you're trying to, right, grow them. You're essentially, right, trying to raise adults, right, that at 18, chronologically, they would be, have the ability to function on their own, and then, right, you wouldn't have to be involved, right? You want them to be the ones that connect, 
their choices, right, mm -hmm. with the consequences, good or bad, right? That's, that's what you want. And so um, that's the goal. Uh, and, and so that's the same emotionally too, right? And these, the emotional parts of ourselves is how do we learn to have a healthy relationship with our emotions so that when life is coming at us, many times, right, it's not the way we like. We don't like the way life is going. We don't like reality. So then, therefore, we're feeling feelings that we don't like. Um, and so this is where addiction can come in many times, is we don't like the way our life is or is going. And so we can find things that, in essence, help us not feel, right? And so whether we're conscious of that or unconscious, it's very easy to find things that, in essence, c cause us to right, numb out or avoid or distract from life. And so those are the things that can very easily become addictions. Um, like I said, drugs and alcohol many times for sure, chemical related. Nowadays, right, anything with the internet, internet can be very addictive. Um, certainly pornography, um, spending, there's so many ways that this can go, but it, they ultimately go way beyond probably what anyone ever begins thinking. No, no one plans to become an addict mm -hmm. to something, but they can start something and then before you know it, right, they've developed that dependency on whatever that is. Um, so it's progressive and you're talking a lot about coping and finding different outlets. Um, you also are referring to the fact that it's complex. If, if, if we have an adult child um, who is struggling with work, with relationships, with finances, um, mental health is not always cut and dry. There's not always one issue, and that's what I hear you referring to. Um, there might be addiction, there might be alcoholism, but there may be uh, depression or anxiety along with that. Um, there might be struggles financially, but it may not just be understanding of finances. Um, it might be these other issues that, that we're talking about. Um, so, so how do you see um, parents of adult children who are struggling, what are some of the emotions that they have? Kind of the, the different stages of recognizing, wait, my adult child um, is struggling. What are, what are the emotional stages that they go through? Great question. Um, I think the big category, right, is anxiety, right? Again, like if we love someone and we're for them, we, we want them to be okay, to just say it simply. But if for some reason they're not, right, we could begin with just having a concern for them. I'm concerned. I see these certain things. They just don't seem okay. They seem down. They seem, you know, distracted, whatever. And again, we can step up to that line and check, you know, how are you doing? How are things? I can start there. The hope would be, right, you're dealing with somebody who, again, just this idea of being an adult. Uh, embraces responsibility for themselves, for their life. Even if they right, don't like the way it's going, they do that. That would be the best case scenario. But again, many times that's not the case. And so when you see someone hurting or struggling and then they're not really embracing that, they're trying to avoid it. And then you start seeing more things that are concerning. Um, again, the anxiety starts kicking in more and more and more because right, you're you're dealing with somebody who's not you, but they're not being or doing what you would want them to do. And so that's the thing that many times begins to drive our behavior, it's having anxiety. I've heard you talk about grieving. How does even grieving play into all of this? Yeah, right, that's the flip side of it is, right, it's a continuum. We, we hope for things, right? We, we hope our children, our adult children, right, are out there functioning, dealing with life, living life, even when it's challenging, right? And hopefully as if they're believers, right? They're, they're trying to do this with God ultimately. That's the hope. But when our hopes don't happen, we essentially, it kicks in the grieving process. We grieve the fact that whatever that is, isn't happening. So whether we, I, I don't think we consciously think, oh, I'm grieving now. 
Sometimes maybe, but many times that, that kicks in, we don't know it, but that's essentially what's going on is you're grieving the fact that your adult child is, is not doing well. They're not okay, and then they're not handling that in a healthy way. They're in fact doing something more unhealthy, and so it's going the wrong direction. Okay. So grief over things not turning out how you had envisioned when they're younger, um, anxiety uh, about their behavior, and they're not uh, uh, living up to their greatest potential. And that's, uh, that's hurtful and hard, hard to watch. So I know this isn't a legitimate question because I know there's no easy answers, but the question is, what do we do? W what do we do when a, a loved one um, is struggling and we can't control what's happening? Um, I do think it is important to note that mental health is a health issue. Uh, depression, anxiety, addiction, there are physical aspects to that. It's not just a matter of not having enough faith or enough willpower. Um, but, but I do know uh, that people in counseling often we're talking about processing, but, but what do we do? Where, where do we start? You, you mentioned a couple things already about how we can approach a worry, but where do we start if our, if our child is struggling? Right, you, what, what, what help is available, what resources? So again, I, I like to think of things, it's like how do you respect this line of like trying to step up to it in your relationship with them, but not stepping over it, would be again, trying to check in with them to see where they are. Is this a concern to them, right? Are, are, they, are they at a place where they're wanting help, just trying to assess, that's kind of respecting them as an adult. And again, hopefully the best case would be like, yes, I'm really struggling, and yes, I, I need help. What do you do if there's not that awareness? Because um, often in, in that, we might ask or point out there might be defensiveness, uh, denial. So what do we do in that case? So this is obviously very much the challenge, is when we're in relationship with somebody who is in denial, right, or is refusing to... They're, 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 another, they're still content doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They might be running into some aspects like, hey, this might be n not be so healthy, but right, they're still fine doing that. And so again, that's gonna trigger anxiety in us. We're, we're, we're not gonna be okay with that. And so then the question, we, we need to be aware of that. And that's where in, there's professional counseling, right? How do you recognize and learn to regulate your own anxiety, recognize your grieving that's going on, so you can have a chance to have self-care in the midst of this dynamic that doesn't just quickly change. Because we can't control it, but how do we take care of ourselves? Let's uh, define some things. Denial, w what is denial? Uh, not seeing reality, not accepting reality as it is. Right, deny whatever's going on, or right, the classic, right? Do you think you have a problem with alcohol? No. Which is, if somebody's in their addiction, that's what they're gonna say, right? No, it's not a problem. Because um, there's, a, there's a fear there, too, of giving up whatever addiction that is. Um, and, I mean, it, it could be other mental health challenges, too. Um, so denial is not accepting the reality, and I think that can be one of the most frustrating parts, okay, so then, go ahead. And let me understand, th there's three ways when you hear these things going off, you know somebody's in their addiction, and that's rationalizing, justifying, or minimizing their behavior, okay. right? When you hear people rationalizing, oh, well, I did this just because of this, mm -hmm. or right, hey, this helps me, you know, just take the edge off. Um, Right, what things like that are they justify their behavior, their choices, or right that minimizing? It's not that bad, right? It's just a few drinks. That yeah. that kind of thing like starts alerting you to the fact that they're they're in that, and then therefore right they're in denial. They're not they're not seeing it as it really is. And it seems people, anybody can can use those same mechanisms with any issue, whether it be financial difficulties, um, with depression. Sometimes there is this, there is that sense of despair, uh, but yet uh, our society kind of stigmatizes the mental mental health issues. So there may be that minimization. Oh, I, I am fine. I, I really am okay. I've got all this to be thankful for. Um, define enabling. What 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 do we mean by enabling? 
doing something that someone else should be doing for themselves, um, right? Just their own uh, recognizing, their own taking responsibility for their life, their emotions, whatever that is. If we're not, we start taking that them on, right? Or carrying others' feelings or their situation, right? We start doing that and then we start participating. How do I help them, right? They're suffering, I love them. And so it's, there's that setup that is very easy to cross the line to become involved. Let me pay your rent. Right on the surface, hey, that's, that's a nice gesture, that's helpful. But if they're under functioning and there's, there's things that they should be tending to and, and these things that we do and that don't have appropriate limits, right, we can easily start enabling them and then really not helping them because it just further buffers them from really reality. And so I, I like to say to people that are in a relationship with people that have addictions is reality is their friend, really. But over here, that's what I think we're so worried about. It's like, oh my gosh, right, if I don't help them, then they're not gonna pay their rent, and then they're gonna, right, get evicted. That's bad, let's do what, whatever we can to help them. And so, but really, if, if there's something going on there, you, you actually want them to run into reality because that would ultimately, I think, be one of the things that could help them connect dots. Okay, so reality helps with the process. Um, in essence, I hear you saying that uh, when we do for them what they can do for themselves, we're ra rationalizing and justifying and minimizing. Um, and there is that sense of denial because we, we hope that they will be doing well. Uh, so, such a difficult place to be. Uh, how do we, and define this term, but how do we set boundaries? I think that's one of the, the things you have to include in any form of helping, right, is defining that. W what does that mean? Is it indefinite? Do I just continue to just give and give? Or setting a boundary would be like, right, I'm sorry, you're hurting. I'd be willing to, just make this up, I'll give you $100 for a couple of months. And then, right, I'll readdress the situation and where you are to see, right, if that's helping you, right, or if that's just really going into their denial, that kind of a thing. So okay. setting boundaries within right, however you're gonna help. So boundaries about how much help we give. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like how you said that because there may be some help. What we're trying to avoid is that it just covers up the behavior and allows the behavior to continue uh, without any consequences. Um, what, what is our, our mindset? Talk about how we need to approach the fact that we can't control the behavior of others. I think hopefully like this, right? It's saying it out loud. It's, it is very anxiety producing, but that's a big part is like, we have to learn to regulate our anxiety uh, outside of, right, how we help others, right? We need to see it ourselves, right? Not be in denial about that. Hey, I'm, this gives me tremendous anxiety. So I need to figure out how do I take care of myself? How do I learn to regulate that in such a way? And hopefully, right, that brings us to right, the spiritual solution, needing God's help along the way. Uh, right, we're powerless over others. And so it creates that situation where there's a tension because there's, we're powerless over them. They're not behaving or acting or life's not, you know, um, Life's difficult for them. And so, right, we need God's help to learn to regulate ourselves in the midst of that. So we're, we're anxious ourselves. We have to manage that because we are powerless over the other. Uh, we can still have hope uh, for healing and change, which does happen. Uh, often when people think of counseling, they're thinking of the difficulty uh, not necessarily the progress that does happen. Certainly doesn't happen all at once, but, but it's there. So if we, we think about all of this, though it's not easy to do, but think of it in, in stages, uh, we become aware that there's a challenge. We experience grief, you said. 
Um, there's always anxiety when somebody is struggling because we, we do care. Uh, then you, you talked about stepping up the intervention to, to address it and um, to talk about what we see is what I heard you say. Um, I noticed this, I noticed that. Um, you've already mentioned when this issue begins to impact different areas of your life and the life of your child, uh, then you're, you're ramping up that intervention, and maybe it is talking to a counselor. Um, one thing that you and I talk about often, the reason why we love being at the church is we want people to be able to talk about what they're struggling with and not feel ashamed or embarrassed that, that we, all, we all face struggles. Uh, so talking about it, uh, what else along, along that, 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 that continuum of how we intervene? Part of it is acceptance that we can't control it. But what else would you say as far as how to do our best to help our loved one? So I think this can be a, a helpful tool. There's three C words, um, care, curious, or concerned. Mm -hmm. and many times that's what's going on with us. We see something, right? We see this loved one, we care about them, but we see something that's concerning, right? And so th those can be great words to help facilitate a conversation. That many times, again, out of our anxiety, we can, we can just be scared to even bring it up, right? Because we already know like that we're gonna get our head bit off, right? Or rejected or whatever. But it helps bring clarity to say, hey, I, you know, I'm concerned. I, I've seen this, this, and this. And again, that the hope would be they, you're, they would say, you're right. You know, that, that is going on and it's not good. They would at least acknowledge something. That'd be helpful. They may not. But, right, or I care about you. I see this kind of destructive thing going on that you're doing, right? Or I'm curious, you said this the other day, or I saw this, what's up with that, right? And so these can be words that help facilitate essentially a conflictual, potentially conflictual conversation. Um, but to your questions, like that's what we can do, right? It's just try to, try to get that to establish something um, and, and like you said, we're talking about, you know, again, an addiction like drugs, alcohol, but like you said, if somebody's in a, in a depression, you see that they're just not right. And there might not be a, you know, addiction per se, but right, the same thing. You care about them, you're curious, you don't seem like yourself. Hopefully, right, again, just an acknowledgement would be the first step. And then, right, being able to say, hey, there's help available. Right, there's, there's help, um, right? Would you be open to talking to somebody? That's what they do. Um, maybe they could connect some dots, right? And just begin to help you with where you are, right? Mm -hmm. um, again, that's the hope um, yeah. there. You know, we didn't talk about tough love, but when you uh, talked about not giving to the point of doing something that they could do themselves or keeping them from reality, that's when we assess, okay, what is tough love if we are keeping them from their reality? So get us to the point of hope. What is the hope? Not that every situation in our lives is tied up in a neat bow, but, but what, is, what, is our, what is our hope? Well, right, I mean, many times, like, this is how life plays out. It's messy, it's not pretty, and again, people, we don't intend to start an addiction, but, right, we can find ourselves in that. Um, and so again, if we're in relationship with that or see that, the hope would be someone would acknowledge that and get on their own road to recovery. This is right, the 12 steps um, th that we would come to the end of ourselves. Uh, the 12 steps are a spiritually based right, program based on biblical principles to realize we need God's help to live life. Right, when we, step one is right, that we realize our life has become unmanageable, right? And when we try to manage life, we start, you know, involving these things that become unmanageable, right? And just the insanity grows. 
And so in a good way, right, we have to come to the end of ourself. We have to come to the end of that and realize when I live life in my own power, it only gets so far and it really is not pretty, right? It's in fact a train wreck at this point. So hopefully, right, that's the bottom that someone gets to, not pretty, but then that's what enables someone to, to turn, right? To realize they need a power greater than themselves to restore them to sanity, which is step two in the 12 steps. Um, so, but yes, right, I mean, if it's directly an addiction, right, that they would be willing to go to a meeting. Um, I like to say I think that's people's plan is to never go to a meeting, right, in life. Like, that's, an, that's the plan, never to have to do that. So it's very humbling to come to that place. But um, that circles back to some of these boundaries that we can set. It's like, hey, I love you. Um, I'm willing to help you, but you, you have to show some things that you're, you're acknowledging that there's an issue and that you're willing to do some things to get some help, right? You can go to counseling, you can go to a meeting, but right, if I don't see evidences of those things, I, I would be foolish to, to continue to okay. help you. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for sharing your wisdom. Uh, every day you're dealing with lots of uh, complex situations, but uh, you're also um, a, a person offering hope. So, um, so thank you for, for being uh, and doing this uh, with yes. us. Uh, we know that uh, we must recognize that we all need God, that we all face challenges. And so what, what we heard Evan share about uh, was about that complex, both gaining awareness and understanding, um, recognize that we, re recognizing that we can't control um, our situation. At the same time, uh, we can have hope. We can take care of ourselves uh, so that we can be healthy to face whatever it is that we might be facing. Know that the center is here for you. We have uh, therapists here at the church, but also we have other offices from McKinney to Waco and Garland to Arlington. Uh, we're in church offices. Our central office uh, is in Highland Park, close to uh, Lemon and the Toll Road. Uh, we want to be of, of help to you. Thank you again for leading this conference, for Rodney's leadership, for Vicki and, and all the work put into this, uh, because we do believe it's important uh, to talk about mind, body, and soul, uh, to live uh, the lives that God created us to live. Thank you for listening. <laughs>